All right, so free choice. This one's actually pretty uh, easy to dispose of. So here's the idea. Um, you might think that uh, the people that are responding to persuasive advertising are somehow being uh, unable to control themselves, right? So think again, you know, you always have to have in mind, I think when you're reading this, uh, the subliminal advertising case. So, you know, you, you see the ice cream cone on the movie screen, boom. Now you want ice cream, you can't help yourself, you're stuck. And so the worry would be, okay, well, or one worry would be, um, well, that kind of desire isn't actually, um, that's not autonomous. Uh, or sorry, that's not free, um, that's not voluntary. You're not really making genuine choices. So the Arrington claims that a person, so the way that, sorry, the way that Arrington's gonna approach this is by the usual way, you give a definition, then you show the thing doesn't meet the definition, and then Chris was gonna respond in the usual way, which is to show that that definition actually wasn't the definition we were looking for. So that's what's about to happen. Okay, so first thing. So Arrington says that a person chooses freely if they can adduce considerations which justify their act in their mind. So what does that mean? Well, that just means that um, when you find yourself doing something, you can explain to yourself why you're doing it. So why are you uh, eating a taco? Well, I like tacos. That's great. So you're doing it freely. And voluntary is basically you can stop. So if there was, they had been a re or you could have not done it, right? So if there had been, they had been aware of a reason for acting otherwise, they could have done so. So freely just means that you can explain your actions to yourself and uh, voluntary just means that you can not do stuff if you don't think you should or do stuff when you think you should, all right? Now, that, if that's all in re uh, freedom and voluntariness mean, then... Yeah, sure. Advertising is not going to make us uh, not free or not voluntary very often because, well, that's just really hard. It just doesn't work. All right. So like I said, the way that CRISP is going to attack this is in the usual way that you do when somebody gives a definition is by showing that that's not the definition we're looking for. So CRISP points out, and I have to say, I think rightly, um, that this is not really what we care about at all when we're talking about voluntariness or freedom. And he does and he does that by allowing one of the philosopher's favorite characters when it comes to anything around this area to make an appearance, the evil genius, who turns you into a human robot. So she sticks a bunch of electrodes into your brain and makes you do stuff, right? So if I stick some electrodes in your motor cortex, in principle, I could drive you around and make you do things. And you would not be doing it freely because you'd be like, huh, why am I doing it? I don't know. This makes no sense. Why am I eating a taco? I'm not even hungry. It must be that weird guy over there with the remote control, right? And you're like, I'm so full. I don't want to eat any more taco, but yet I'm still making you eat it. So you're not, your eating of the taco wouldn't be voluntary, right? So if I put brain electrodes in your motor cortex like that, then um, it looks like we're I'm undermining both your freedom and your voluntariness. So what Chris was going to suggest is like, look, um, if what we did was instead just um, pair up uh, how should I put this? Um, wait, wait, back up there. Okay, so what, what Chris was then saying, right, is that this doesn't seem like it's getting us enough because just being able to justify to yourself the things that you're doing doesn't really matter that much. Um, because for one, uh, human brains are human brains are great at rationalizing stuff. There's plenty of uh, con, art con artist tricks um, that rely on basically making you kind of do something and then kind of suddenly causing you to be uncertain about what's going on. And then they, you know, right at the right time kind of suggest to you why you're doing the thing that you're doing and you adopt that because your brain's like uh i don't know and then you 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 know subtly slip in a explanation and your brain's like yes that's why i'm doing it okay so those kind of thing that the mere sort of lack of a justification just doesn't seem like it's going to be enough in order to give us any meaningful sense of freedom or voluntary action okay 
So um, then we we turn from there after attacking. We so we first kind of attack uh, the the definition, and then we say, "Hey, look at this. Um, we're placed into an analogous position by persuasive advertising. What do you know, right?" So obviously the, the consumers who are engaged in buying stuff because they've been advertised to, sure, that's going to be voluntary on um, Arrington sense because they can explain to themselves why they're doing it. So remember in the very first example, uh, Arrington was like, yeah, I want to buy the hair dye because I want to look younger. But really the explanation for why he's doing it isn't that he wants to look younger. It's because he wants power and sex. And so... The fact that our consumers are not in sort of the position to be able to make uh, correct judgments about why it is that they're acting, that's something that's going to be missed by Arrington's picture. hope that makes sense. All right. So as to a uh, voluntary, um, it's likely that they would have gone ahead with their purchases even if we had made them aware that the desires had been induced by persuasive advertising, but they would now claim that they themselves had not made the decision, that they were acting on a desire engendered in them, which they did not accept, and for which there was no good reason, right? So the idea is that if you really were able to sneak a desire for ice cream in it, into the person's, you know, desires, uh, via subliminal advertising or whatever, then the people are still going to be able to explain why they're doing stuff, but that doesn't capture uh, freedom in a sense we care about. And it's not going to count as voluntary because if the people knew that they were wanting the ice cream and eating the ice cream because of this sort of, you know, bad causal chain, uh, bad way that the, the desire got into them, uh, then they're going to... Uh, be like, oh, I'm not really in control of what I'm doing. I'm not acting voluntarily. So I guess even the thing that he wants to say here, and I might have just mischaracterized it a second ago. Um, let me read again just to make sure, right? Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess what he's saying is like, look, even if um, the we bought this notion of um, voluntariness, you know, this being able to do otherwise. Um, even if we bought that, we wouldn't necessarily want to say that our consumers who are acting on the basis of desires that came about through persuasive advertising, we wouldn't necessarily want to say that they are actually um, uh, acting voluntarily because, you know, they'd be like, oh, I see why I'm doing this. And that's not you know, I don't think the fact that there's, you know, so take, sorry, let me back up. So take the Carl's Jr. example, right? You know, the person's headed off to Carl's Jr. You're like, why do you want to go to Carl's Jr.? And they're like, I don't know. And you're like, because, and then you're like, because you watch that commercial again, and now you think you're getting sex at the Carl's Jr. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. But I still want to go to Carl's Jr. I just can't help myself. I have to go to Carl's Jr. And then we ask, okay, well, is that person behaving voluntarily? And the answer seems to be, even on, um, on Arrington's definition, right, which is they are acting voluntarily. If they had been aware of a reason for acting otherwise, they could have not done it. So once we've pointed out to our, our friend, hey, you're just going there because of that commercial that makes you think you're going to get sex. And they're like, you're right, but I'm still going. That's not going to count as voluntary, even on Arrington's sense. Okay, so that's what's going on here. Um, by the way, I like this line, the unconscious is not obedient to the commands of the conscious, although it may be forced to listen. It sounds great. I have no freaking clue what it means and how it actually fits with what just went above. Um, so one thing we might talk about is you guys can set me straight on what that is. All right. <laughs>